So I put up a poll and a lot of you wanted to see more hacking. I've been doing some spring cleaning. I found one of my old PSPs, so I figured let's put custom firmware on this and I can show you how to back up a game and then keep a digital copy of a game on it. And you can just play it right off of the memory card. So the first thing you want to do for this is charge it. You want to have at least half of the battery completely charged before starting. So this is just charging, it's probably about like 90 some percent or whatever. And you're going to want to download some files I'm going to have linked in the description below. So now on the PSP we can just go all the way over, go up to USB connection, and you can hear that it just connected to the computer. Now we can carry on on the laptop. So now you can see that the PSP is connected, so we can just open this, go to the PSP folder, then we're gonna go to game, and now in here, we're gonna make a new folder. This folder is gonna be called update, all caps. Now in this folder, we can go to the official firmware, and we can just drag this right over. Now that's done copying, so we can go back. Now we can go down to system settings right here. We can go all the way down to system information. And you can see that we're on version 5.03. So that's, I guess, the last version that I had this on before I put it away and never took it back out of storage again. So now all we have to do is just go back, go over to game. I'm going to go to the memory stick. And then right here we have the official update. So now we can just install this. Now it's asking if we want to upgrade the system to 6.61, so we do, so we're going to hit start. And we have all the information for the user agreement, so we can just push right to go next, go down, accept. So now it's just saying that, you know, don't turn it off at all. Now it's installing. So now we can just set this down, let the update finish. So the update's done, it's going to hit X, now it's just rebooting. And just to confirm this information, now we're on 6.61. So now we can go back and we can connect to USB again. Okay, now we're back at the computer here. We have the PSP. We can open this. Go to PSP again. Go to game again. Now in this folder for update, we're going to overwrite that file with the one from Infinity and Standard, unless you're doing the other PSP, but this one is for the PSP 1000, 2000, and 3000, so we're going to copy this over, and we're going to replace that file. Now we can go back to the game directory here. Now we can go back to the files that we downloaded, and we can take this one here. Now in this folder here we have PSP and SE plugins, so we're going to go to the PSP folder, game, and now in here, for this PSP specifically, because this is a PSP 3000, we're only going to require these two files here, but if you have a PSP 1000, then you can also do this one here, and then you don't need infinity. So for this one here, we're only going to take these two files, and now we can go back. So now we have this SE plugins, which is going to go to the root of the PSP. So we're just going to go right back here, and we're going to drag this over to to here. So everything on the computer at this point is done. So now we can go back over to the PSP. We can exit USB mode and we can go over to game and go down to the memory stick. Now in here what we want to do is we want to go to Pro PSP Firmware Update. I'm going to run this one. Now all we have to do is just press X to launch the custom firmware. There we go, so it's ready to go. So now we can hit X to start. And now when we go over here to system settings, all the way down to the bottom, system information, and you can see that we are on 6.61 Pro C. So now we have access to the VSH menu. So now in here we can do overclocking and everything, we can change what connects from the USB device. So when we put a disk in here, when we connect to USB, we can actually drag the ISO file off of the PSP to make a backup. But for now, we have to make this permanent because when we restart the PSP, so right here we can reset device, that's going to restart it. And now that we've restarted, you can see that we are on the regular firmware again. So we're no longer on custom firmware. So now we have to go to the memory stick and we have to launch the fast recovery. And all this is gonna do is just restart the PSP automatically right into the custom firmware for us. There we go. Now, this is a totally acceptable solution. You can leave it here if you wanted, and then you could have the regular PSP firmware and the custom PSP firmware, but there's really no point to that. So now that we're on the custom firmware, so we can run non-official files, we can go to the memory stick, and we can go to Infinity 2. 
And all we have to do here is just hit X to install Infinity. There we go. Installation's complete. X to reboot. So now Infinity is installed, but because we've just rebooted, it's gone back to the stock firmware. So we have to go back to the memory stick and we have to go to fast recovery to run this again. So now it's gonna boot back into the custom firmware. And now we're on the custom firmware, so we can go back to the memory stick. We can launch Infinity 2 again, but because it's already installed, now it's going to load. So now the dialog at the bottom to hit X to install is gone because it's installed. So now we just hit left and we can choose pro custom firmware because that's what we just installed. So now it has a little asterisk right there. So now if we go back, hit X to exit, it's now rebooted. We can go to system settings, go all the way down to system information, and now you can see we're on 6.61 Pro C Infinity. So now, no matter how many times we restart this, on boot, it's gonna launch Infinity 2, which is going to patch this to tell it to automatically launch Pro C2. And again, just restarted and it's still ready to go. So now the last thing that I want to show you here is how to back up one of your games. So that way you can store it on memory stick and then you can keep all of your games with you without having to bring tons of games with you. So we're going to go up to USB connection, but first we're going to hit select. That's going to bring up the VSH menu and under USB device right here, we're just gonna hit left and that's gonna go to UMD disk. And we can push select again to get rid of this menu and we can put the disk in from the back of the PSP. Slide the disk in, close. So you can see that UMD is now loaded so we can go over settings and then at USB connection. So now you can see that we have a completely different drive that comes up here. So we can open this and that right there is the ISO file of the actual game itself. So all we have to do is just copy this over to the computer. So now it's reading off of the disk as it's copying this over. So now once this is done, we can just rename the file to correspond with the game. So this one's going to be Need for Speed Most Wanted. And then we'll be dragging this over to an ISO folder on the PSP itself. So now you can see here that this is Need for Speed Most Wanted 510 and it's an ISO file. So now on the PSP PSP again. So now we can go back, we can open the VSH menu by pushing select, we can go down to USB device and we can just push right to go back to the memory stick, hit select again to get rid of that menu, hit USB connect again, and now we can go back over to the laptop. Now back on the PSP, we can just create a new folder here called ISO. And now in this folder, we can just drag this game right on there. Okay, so with the game copied over, that's it. It's done. So we can go over to game. We can see the UMD and the memory stick, and we have Need for Speed Most Wanted. So just for proof of concept, we can take this out. We can remove the disc, put that aside, and we can start the game. Because now it's playing it off of the actual memory stick that's in here. It's not playing it off of a disc anymore. So also the load times are going to be faster as well which means that it's going to have a slight increase in battery life because it's no moving parts anymore. So you can see that everything's working perfectly fine. There's no latency or anything. The load times are actually really quick. Thumbstick works. My driving is still terrible. But that's basically it. Now I can back up the rest of my games and I can store them all on the memory stick and I never have to bring a whole bunch of games with me anywhere I go. I also have the added function of being able to use the VSH menu to shut down the device. So now one more thing before we wrap this up is how do we play PS1 games on this? So again, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to USB connection. Okay, so now you can see that we have a few different files here. So we have Gran Turismo, PopsCon, Poploader, V4i, PSX2 PSP. Then we have a background cover, and then we have a Gran Turismo ROM right here, which is the bin file and cube file. So we're only going to be looking at this bin file. And then a compatibility list that I've been putting together from a few different websites. These two programs here, PopCon, which is converter, and then uh, PSX2 PSP. These are for converting the PSP ROM into the eboot.pbp that we need to actually run on the PSP itself. Uh, most people use this one here, PSX to PSP, but the only thing that I didn't like about this is you can't compress them, so it does just use like the raw amount of space. It actually ends up being just slightly bigger because we're going to be adding some files to it. Uh, so I'll show you how this one works first. I'm just going to open that folder. So when you first use this program, you have to get a file called base.pbp. So that's going to go into files, and you're going to just drag and drop this one here, which I have everything linked in the description below. So you download this file, and then just drag it into this folder, and then when you go back here, you can just load this, and everything will work fine. Now the program 
program will still load and everything, but you can't actually convert the file without that file in the files folder. So now we can go to the convert menu and right up here at the top, we can just click this little box with the three dots and we will load Gran Turismo. That's the ROM that we're going to be converting. Now, for some reason right here, the save title says one and two. So we're just going to delete that just so it's Gran Turismo. So that's fine. We can minimize that menu. You can see this is what it's going to look like on the PSP itself. So we can go and change the icon to the cover art for the game, which I've already found here. So now you can see that the cover art is up. You can leave that the way it is. Or what I did was I found a background image that represents the game pretty well. So I've also loaded that in. So this one here has to be a ping picture. So it has to be 80 by 80 pixels by PNG. And then this background picture right here has to be the resolution of the display. There's no reason having it any bigger because that's just going to be taking up space for no reason. So that one there has to be 480 by 272 pixels and also .png. So that's fine. That's what it's going to look like on the actual PSP itself. And then that's what a save game is going to look like. So we're content with that. So we can go back here and we can convert. So now it's converting. It's done. We can close all of this. And now when we go back, we have this file right here that it just created. So in here is the eboot.pbp, which you can see is 678 megabytes. So it's a little bit more because we added to those pictures. Now that's fine. And we could just take this folder right here and we could just drag it over to the PSP, but I want to convert press it so we can use this one here pops con so we'll open this one and it's basically the exact same thing we just click this button right here to open the iso and you can see right here is the same gran turismo.bin file that we just previously used we can load that one in now right here on the right side we can set icon that's going to be the cover art and it comes up right there and then for the background again we're just going to pick the same background that we picked before now everything's fine there but this one here has iso compression so we can turn that on or off and we have levels up to nine so you start at level nine test it on the PSP. If it crashes or there's any issues, then you go down to level 8 and you try it again and level 7 and 6 and so on. And then you just keep going with that until you have it working. And most games can be compressed a lot. This one specifically can be compressed to level 9 without any issues at all. So now that that's done, we can start convert. And this one is going to be taking a little bit longer because it's going to be compressing the actual game itself. But we will be saving a lot of space. So there we go. It's done. So now we can close this. And you can see right here is the folder that it just created. And now in here is also a keys bin file, which is required for older PSP firmware, so I'm not sure if that's still relevant because we're going to be using Pops Loader, but I guess it's better to have it and not need it. But this file right here, the eboot.pvp, this is the actual game itself, and now it is no longer 678 megabytes. So we've saved a significant amount of space. All we have to do is we could just drag this over and then rename it, but I already have one ready right here. So right here you can see that it's the exact same file size and everything. To put this on the PSP, all we have to do is go to PSP, Game, and then you just drag it over, which I already have it right here. So there's the eboot.pvp, file size and everything is fine. We have the keys.bin file in case we need that. So now what we can do is we can go back to the root with the PSP and we can actually make this work by using pop loader v4i. So on the PSP, we're going to go to se plugins. I'm just going to leave this folder open. Now in pops loader v4i, we're going to open this folder and go to se plugins. All we're going to do is just highlight these and just drag them right over. So now that's done, and we are completely done on the PSP. Here, we'll just leave this open because we will need this PS1 compatibility list in a second. So now back on the PSP, we can go back, we can go all the way over to the memory stick. And now right here, you can see Gran Turismo. Now, one thing that we're going to have to do right now is when we load this, it's just going to load a black screen and then nothing's going to happen. So we're going to load the game and immediately hold R. Now it's just loaded the pops loader menu. And now for this game here, if we just quickly go back over to the computer, now all we have to do is just open this compatibility list. Now with this open, we just hit control F to open find. So now we can just type in Gran Turismo and then hit enter. You can see that it came up in the list. You can close that. And then right here we have Gran Turismo. And then it says that it was tested on 3.71 with the M33 driver. So this might not be needed, but if it is, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But this specifically is what we're after, 3.71. So now we can select this on the PSP and the game should work. We'll go to 371. We'll select that one. And now it may work or it may crash. And if it crashes, we just have to reboot and then it'll work from this point on. Oh, so it worked the first time. There we go. That's it. Now we can play PS1 games. So as you can see, everything is working and we're using that highly compressed file. And everything is fine. So this just shows that everything works perfect and we can just operate the PSP just like normal go back and it's just like a regular PSP except now we can play PS1 games and now we don't have to load that menu next time we load it because it saved that it last worked on 3.71. There we go.
So now one last thing, if it's not booting, is you might have to go back to the VSH menu and then go down to UMD ISO mode and change that to M33 driver. So that was mentioned in the compatibility list that it worked on the M33 driver. So this one with 3.71 was the combination that works for that. And we've just confirmed that it does. So it's just easier to do what's in the list because it's confirmed working instances. But anyway, that's it for this. Uh, like the video if you liked the video. Dislike the video if you disliked it. That's cool. Join the members program if you want to help support the channel. You get VIP access to the discords, that way you get communication on everything that's going on, the moment it's going on, and you can also watch any of the videos the second they're released instead of waiting for the upload dates. Subscribe to the channel, that's cool, that always helps out, or you know, don't, I don't know, I'm not telling you what to do.